Okay, so this is the case that everybody on the internet is talking about right now. Yeah, we got to talk about the horrific case involving Abby Choi in Hong Kong. Uh, this is something that a lot of people hit me up to talk about. I did yeah. not want to talk about it originally, yeah. but at the end of the day, man, I mean, we somebody's got to contribute something to this conversation, right? Yeah, yeah, and I want to have a reasonable conversation about it, guys. In this video, we are not playing detectives. We are not playing investigators. I'm not going to try to connect the dots and do this and this. I, I don't, I, you know, what we're talking about in this video is why so many people are intrigued by it. The reasons why this is such big global news and consuming a lot of people's conversations right now. And we'll Especially get into in it. the Asian world, particularly in the Chinese world, yeah. particularly in the Hong Kong yeah. Cantonese world. And, and what can you maybe learn from it or take away from it we'll talk about all that you guys know us we try to do a good job as much as possible so please hit that like button um and uh i guess david starting off with some internet reactions some yeah. comments i mean the internet reaction was like man what about the kids like there's mm. all these media stories coming out about this coming out about that but what about the kids and obviously that's going to be lost in it um in the sense that you know that's the humanistic angle that comes way later and is almost more handled in a private matter. But obviously, you know, the details are so gruesome and, and sensational, it almost like is overlooked. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the kids are, I'm sure, going to be traumatized by this for sure, for, for life. You know, uh, it's such a horrific thing. And again, we're going to spare you the details. We'll leave a link down below if you guys want to follow the details. We are not going to get into them, though. Um, somebody said that the Chinese media or Chinese language media had a lot more details than the English media had. Mm. Obviously, something is happening in the East, in Hong Kong, with a Hong Kong socialite, Abby Choi, from a billionaire family from Hainan. Um, that's going to be like, all those details are going to be more circulating, I guess, in the Chinese language. Oh, world. there's going to be way more details about her family, her husband's family, and her ex-husband's family, and what they were connected to, the companies out there, because obviously in the English news, they're not really going to be covering like all the businesses that they had and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I guess so, yeah. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. But yeah. yeah, I do think that that, it changes it for the Western people because the Western people, they're just going to consume whatever the media companies put out, which is more than likely, and I'm not really blaming them. It is what it is. I guess we're in an age of media where you just make clicks and make money, but there's sensational headlines without delivering the details, For right? sure. I think, I think possibly the media is writing the stories in a certain way to get you hooked. I saw some headlines that were like way too graphic and I'm like, yo guys, what are you guys doing? Like, this is not even news. It is what it is. Um, the next comment was, man, this is like worse than a movie. Is this like a Stephen King novel mixed with like crazy rich Asians? Uh, like what is going on here? Some people were talking about this. This reminds them of this movie, the untold story that came out in Hong Kong in 1993 that was based off a real incident from 1985 like, mm -hmm. people were just like, and I think that that's honestly why this is getting covered so much. Because literally, Andrew, and I'm not making light of this at all. It's literally, when you read it and you follow it, it plays out like Stephen King mixed with Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, because, uh, you know, we're talking about the elite class of people here. And I think generally when you think of like bad stuff happening, I don't know. You just imagine it's more for the middle class, the lower middle class. You don't think it usually touches the upper echelon of society. And we're talking about between Hong Kong and China and mainland China, all these businesses, there's a lot of money to go around. For sure. Uh, the next comment was like, uh, basically, you know, your classic kind of culture wars. A lot of people had a lot of jokes. We cannot post those jokes, but like about, you know, Chinese eating everything and yeah, blah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And then other people being like, oh yeah, coming back and being like, what about Jeffrey Dahmer? What about Jeffrey Dahmer? And I'm almost like, yo, where are we at as a society right now? We're just comparing like cannibal uh, let me let me tell you this I man i think every culture has its weirdos and every like the west is not is is no stranger to weird stuff and and for sure asia's not either so anytime there's a lot of people moving around doing a lot of things with money or technology or media there's gonna be weird stuff Man, there's weird stuff since, honestly, the beginning of time, but maybe we're more hyper aware of all the weird little yeah. uh, plot charts that are happening around the world, obviously, in this age of information. Somebody said, you know, no matter how much technology or uh, human advancements that people make, we're still just human, and we're yeah. subject to being pure evil. 
Yeah, no, the dudes who pulled this off are evil. It was not a crime of passion, of rage, of spontaneity. It was definitely a planned out, organized thing uh, involving multiple people. So honestly, they're terrible human beings and they need to get the maximum punishment. Of course, this one, I think I want to say more came from the Chinese world. Uh, somebody said, uh, this is why you have to marry at your own financial level in society. Right. Because obviously, if you guys know the story, Abby Choi came from a billionaire family. She married a guy who was much, much poorer than her, divorced him, and then got quasi-married to a new billionaire guy. And that's kind of like what caused this piece. Of, basically, people were saying like, it's a class thing or a social stratum thing. Well, basically, the ex-husband who ended up carrying out the horrific crime with his team, they wanted something from her assets. and assets from her that she was going to get from her new billionaire husband. Essentially, this was a story of greed and evilness. And uh, somebody just said, man, clearly the Hong Kong police is corrupt since the dad never went to jail on the original car charges he got when he was a police sergeant or chief. And obviously, her ex-husband has had multiple warrants out on his on him, and he never got arrested for him. Yeah. No, I, I, I did. But do you think that this case is high profile enough that it reached... Uh, the global, you know, platforms and that it's about elite billionaires that maybe this might trickle down and cause some type of change within like the police structure of Hong Kong. Do you think, I mean, sometimes when things are like on this level, it does make the structures think, Ooh, oh. should we do something different? Or do we got to like do something else? Like what, what is making us look bad to me thinking about how I believe that system is structured. The change wouldn't as much come from the bottom up it would become from the bottom to the media. The media alerts someone way at the top and somebody way at the top trickles down to punish the people who are involved, whether that was letting off the uh, ex-husband's father who was somehow like should have been in jail and and obviously the ex-husband mm -hmm. should have been in jail. Um, anyway, let's get into the takeaways, Andrew. Um, people love drama. Yeah. And this is, like I said, a real-life horror story. Honestly, when you get into the details, and I do not encourage you to do so unless you are the type of person who's like you're into that type of stuff... And um, I guess what I would say is like it would it would take an author to write this, like a professional author to write these layers. Yeah, I remember when people had sent this to us the last couple of days and I saw the headline and the thumbnail and I was just like, I read it and I was like, all right, man, what kind of mood am I in right now? To delve into this. Because right, you're like, trying to protect like, your energy, Yeah, right? I was like, what time of the day is this? Is, am I, is this 2 a.m.? Because maybe I don't want to read this before I go to sleep. Oh, man. Right. All right. And then I'm not, do I want to do this right? right when I wake up, too, to set the tone? <laughs> right. And I'm like, nah, let me, like, chill on this, and then I'm going to go through it slowly because this is not something that I need blasted but, in my but face But it was right crazy away. because there's people I know who don't even follow anything from Asia that are Asian-American, right? Or they're kind of, like, you know, just concerned within their yeah. own life and their friends. They were talking about it. Oh, That's man. when I knew when everybody, like, that doesn't even talk about things was talking about yeah, this like, thing. And, and this is the unfortunate thing is that this might be one of the first Asian news stories that you follow of the month. Like, let's say even if you're Asian or non-Asian, this might be the first Asian news story you're even keeping up with this year. Right, right. Because right, you're not really tapped in yeah, or you're interested not, like that or engaged. You're not tapped into all the other good stuff or the other, like, you know, bad stuff. You're just, this is it. Right. And this is your exposure. And I'm like, right. oh, great. Now Hong Kong or Asians are being painted a certain way, you know, whatever. Um, I think that obviously to be fair, Andrew, I guess to play the devil's advocate, I can see why people are following it. It involves billionaires, socialites, high society, police corruption, family betrayal. There's just a lot of things happening here that obviously if a similar incident occurred in the low class or the middle class, it wouldn't have all these layers to make it so spectacular, right? We're talking about there's less than a thousand billionaires on earth. And this case involved Two families that were billionaires. And, and, and not only is she, was she from a billionaire family, she's also like an influencer and kind of like a model. In she was ways. on the cover of Vogue Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah, so she had followers and she was a KOL, as they would say in Asia, key opinion leader. And yeah, I mean, you know, I'll tell you this, and this is kind of a weird thing, but I guess there are so many people out there with followings now that there are going to be crimes and cases that involve them because now there's just so many people who have followers, right? right. Well, like, the amount of people who are high profile, probably yeah. at least like 50, if not 100x. I mean, there the was a case years. in Florida, right, where the girlfriend stabbed the boyfriend and right. she had like a, a Instagram following and an OnlyFans and all this stuff. So it's just going to happen. It's going to happen again because everybody has these social media Profiles. Um, point number three, Andrew, this thing statistically on a uh, per 100,000 person level, like statistically is still very low in Asia, but it seems like when it does happen, it's like horrific. 
Yeah, because like, there was a case that just came out of Japan too, and obviously there's, Japan is known for you know there's some sort of stereotype yeah. that like when it does happen, it's very weird. I like, think when terrible things happen, it's it's weird and gruesome. It, yeah, yeah. In cultures or places where basically like let's say the homicide rate is super low, that maybe each time it does happen, it seems a little bit more weird because those people really, really want it to happen. If you think about it in America, there's actually a lot of like homicides that happen. Like a lot of people die all the right. time. And there's certain cities that like, dude, it's happening at an alarming rate because we have guns, right? And then everybody like dies so quickly. But it's not as weird. Yeah, it's not weird. Weird. Or on a unquote, percentage weird. basis, right. on a ratio distribution sense. Right, but I, I, but I think, you know, every country and every culture has its psychopaths and has its weirdos and, and has its danger. Honestly, I kind of question like the publicity that all this stuff gets. I don't know... You know, I don't want to be a doomsday person. I just don't know if it's super helpful if, like, all no, the details no. get made in a five no, movies, no, no. two TV shows, no, and no, it's no. commoditized because obviously news outlets need to commoditize the clicks. No, no, and the no, guys, and the guys I, I, I follow media a lot. There is no possible way that it is good that this many people are reading this thing. Right. So, so don't read it. Don't look into it. Just watch this video. If you didn't know about it, now you know something happened. Don't worry about it. Move on with your day. Um, point number four is it just made me sad. It made me feel in a weird way. I don't know how to describe it. A little bit of shame. You know, like our family's from Hong yeah. Kong. I never want to see a place that, uh, you know, we went there a lot growing up too. And it's like, uh, it's like, man, I don't know if it, I, I know it always had a CD pass, but it felt like it got cleaned up and maybe it's going downside again. Or like, maybe it was always this way. And it was just a segment of society we're not exposed okay. to. You know, the dad was uh, the security uh, forensics lead at, at Wong Kok. Everybody knows okay. Mong Kok is like a very uh, more gang infested zone. Yeah. And like, it's just like, it made me feel like, I was like, man, nobody wants a place like this. These are supposed to be your high society people that are acting like this. Dude, let me tell you this, man. It sucks because like the only media and the news that you're going to get out of Hong Kong over here is like, it's about the protests. It's about this. You know, you're not hearing all the good things because as a, like if you're a non-Hong Kong person or you're a non-Asian person, you don't give a crap about the good stuff that's happening in Hong Kong. You just want to hear all the sensational stuff, all the crazy right, stuff. And maybe you don't follow that much news per year, right? Yeah, so, so that's your two things that you paid attention to this year. Last but not least, man, I guess everybody, what, 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 what should people take away from I, it? I, I, I mean, again, I'm not playing a detective or investigator, but, you know, just watch your circles around you, right? Obviously, uh, the people around this woman, Abby, they happen to be not good people. Maybe, maybe they tricked her or whatever, or they were good people and then they turned bad, but I'll tell you this, man, they, these are not like... It, it, you got to watch who you're around and that basically this was not a crime out of rage and passion. This was planned out. And so it's pure, it's evil. There are certain outcomes that are like statistically way more probable when you run in certain circles than other circles. Yeah. That is the truth. Yes. That's just the truth. It, it's like if you want to avoid being shot, you would not hang out with certain types of people that are involved in that type of scene, right? right there are people who have guns, right? You know, you wouldn't, that's, but I think that no one would expect that this happened. So I think this is pretty sad and, uh, you know, it, but it is a, ho a horrific sensationalized story that people love talking about. And that's why people are talking about For it. For sure. So. And um, yeah, we just wanted to have a level-headed discussion about it and not get into the details, obviously. And, you know, I'm sure you could go a million other videos and a million other articles that can give it to you the way you want if you were looking for something sensational. Let us know in the comments section below what you think. What are the takeaways? Um, keep it civil. And until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.